Hello and welcome into End on a Make. I just wanted to talk a little bit tonight about the playing tournament that starts tomorrow uh, or today if you're watching this Tuesday morning and just kind of talk a little bit about you know how we got here. I think that that the idea you know it's been a controversial topic for the last few weeks especially as we've seen you know more players like more high profile players like LeBron, Luka Doncic, uh, Mark Cuban spoke out about it as well critically um, and it became kind of a hot button issue of like, are, is this a mistake? Is the NBA making a mistake doing this? Because, you know, this play in tournament, like one and done type scenario could like lead to some big upsets. It could lead, it could shake things up as far as the playoffs go. And I mean, you look now, we're looking at one of the playing games is going to be the Lakers and the Warriors. And it's not single elimination, but imagine you know you don't get lebron or steph curry in the playoffs like one of them is going to knock out the other one um so i i mean with that in mind i do think this is a really good idea i've liked the basketball the last couple of weeks a lot and i think that's a lot more than we can say typically about you know late april early may basketball in the regular season i think you see a lot of teams you know call it quits early you see players get shut down you see a lot more tanking but, you know, this season we had a lot of competitive teams. We had a lot of teams trying to stay competitive because of the the play-in tournament and the possibility of being that 9 or 10 seed. I mean, you know, you see the trade that, like, the Chicago Bulls did where they sent multiple picks to Orlando to get Vucevic. You know, that wasn't a team that was thinking they were going to tank. <laughs> that wasn't a team that was trying to lose games. There was only a, a couple teams, really, at the end there that were trying to tank or, you know not trying to win i guess instead of saying tank so now here we are the playoffs start next weekend we have the playing tournament to determine the seven and eight seeds and those matchups and i think the playing games are going to be exciting i think the matchups for both of those uh conferences are going to be good tuesday today if you're watching this we have the hornets and the pacers and the wizards and the celtics and it's, it's crazy to think that the Celtics are in this position now where they're in the play-in tournament and in like a must-win type of setting. Uh, just because, you know, they're one of the, the most talent-filled teams in the East. But, you know, injuries, COVID, everything that's kind of disrupted their season so far, you know, you see it. You see the impact of that. And we'll see that on the Western side too. So it's kind of a bummer to think that, you know, this top talent team is either going to be, you know, out before the playoffs even start, or they're going to find themselves at a complete disadvantage here um, and get, you know, swept or gentlemen swept out in the first round. And in that point, that's like, okay, cool. Why did we do this? <laughs> um, for the Wizards, it's kind of a similar thing. Uh, Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook have been an electric pair together for the last couple months of the season in particular. They've looked like everything we expected them to be. Uh, even more so, really, because Russ has been so much healthier than we thought and then that we knew. And he's been, you know, completely revitalized here in the last few months of the season. It's been awesome. So to see them in this play-in is kind of a bummer because they could be a top six team for sure if they had had this sustained success all year and if they had, you know, guys like Thomas Bryant, who missed most of the season with the 20 ACL, Denny Advia went down, Brad Beals missed time with an injury. So like a lot of their key players have been in and out of the rotation and that kind of sunk them a little bit too. But here they are. They went from being one of the bottom teams in the East with, you know, people saying trade Bradley Beal to a win or two away from the playoffs. So it can't be too mad because getting them in the playoffs would be an exciting matchup with how well they've been playing. Um, and I think, you know, either way with that matchup, I think it's going to be something that the NBA will be happy with because I think both of those series will will be entertaining. I think a Wizards series against the uh, 76ers would probably be, or sorry, not the 76ers, against the uh, Brooklyn Nets would probably be a little more fast-paced and exciting as opposed to the Celtics. But, I mean, either way, can't really complain. And then for the other matchup, we have the Pacers and the Hornets. And it's sad to say, but... I'm sure the NBA is like, hey, Indy, you don't have to try too hard to win this. It's okay. Just rebuild for next year. It's it's, it's okay. Because <laughs> um, obviously the Hornets are the young, exciting team. They have LaMelo, who the league is big on. 
and who you know gets all of the all of the social media posts you know you have like house of lamello and all those uh pages so i'm sure that they would be excited to see the hornets go on a little bit of a run uh maybe even like knock out the celtics say if the wizards were to win the first game then the hornets win and then you have the hornets and the celtics play and the hornets could knock off the celtics it could be really a huge content uh huge content creator for for them because i can imagine already all of the celtics blogs and all of the hornets blogs and all of the national media really being like are the celtics done is their window closed have the hornets passed them by already um and so i can see that as like ready-made storylines but i think the east is going to be exciting games and entertaining games i just don't think it'll have quite the stakes and natural drama of the western conference where we'll have the Spurs and the Grizzlies, which I kind of don't ever want to count out Greg Popovich in a single elimination style game. I think the Grizzlies are a, a lot of fun to watch. I think getting Jaron Jackson Jr. back for the end of the year and now is is huge for them. I think Ja continues to take huge leaps. But at the same time, I just can't bet against, <laughs> I can't bet against Popovich and the Spurs. I just don't think, you know, I don't, I don't doubt him. That's that's all I'm gonna say. I don't doubt that team. I don't doubt how they play. I don't doubt DeMar DeRozan in crunch time. I think it'll be a close game, and I think it'll come down to who can go toe-to-toe, bucket-for-bucket, and I think it'll actually probably be Jaron Jackson Jr. that's the wild card here because the Spurs don't really have a lot of um, athletic bigs that can challenge him. So I think it'll. I think as he goes, will go the story of the game. And then you have the big uh, Wednesday night evening game, the Lakers and the Warriors, probably Adam Silver's dream. I'll bet you he just closed the door in his office and screamed in joy when he saw that, that that was going to be the matchup. Steph Curry's on a tear. He put that entire team on his back. He's carried them all year. He's basically dragged himself into the MVP conversation with the performances that he's had. And now he gets to go toe-to-toe with the Lakers, the defending champions who just got back, LeBron and Anthony Davis finally, who in no other world would be the seventh seed and in this play-in unless it was, you know, the injuries that hampered both of those guys and other guys like Schroeder missed time. Um, They kind of just had people in and out of the lineup all year. So you have those two teams playing and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be unpredictable really I think I think you could tell me anything about that game and I would probably believe it you could tell me Steph hit 11 or 12 threes he put up 50 and the Warriors won by like five or six you could tell me Steph struggled a bit put up like 28 or 30 points and the Lakers won you could tell me a blowout happened on either side where the Warriors just hit everything or the Lakers just hit everything you could tell me Anthony Davis had 30 and 20 LeBron had a 30 point triple double like any combination of things I will believe with this game because these are two hot unpredictable teams that have such high ceilings for offense that the difference here is going to probably be the Lakers defense which was inconsistent uh, towards the end of the season faltered a little bit down the stretch run but throughout the season and even without LeBron or Anthony Davis it stayed like a top 10 defense they were still being able to, you know, stay in games and win games and grind out games with that defensive ability. And I think that that's probably what it's going to come down to. I'm sure the Warriors will need someone like an Andrew Wiggins or a Juan Toscano Anderson to step up for him and, and to, to help provide offense when Steph is probably getting double or triple or, as we've seen, quadruple teamed as he crosses half court. I'm really curious to see how LA tries to play him. And I think that's going to probably be how the matchup goes, is can those Warriors players hit the open shots if Steph or Draymond finds them while he's being smothered? And how badly is the disparity when Steph is is off the court compared to when he's on the court? Um, I think that'll be the two things, really, that swing this game. But, like I said, you can tell me anything about it, and I'll probably believe it. Um, as for predictions, I think it'll probably be the Lakers getting the seven seed and then the Warriors ending up the eight seed, playing that second game, probably against the Spurs. Um, I think Memphis is very close. I think a full year of health with Jaron Jackson Jr. 
Uh, maybe a little bit more development. Maybe they make a trade or two somewhere. Uh, I think they're still right on the cusp, and I think Ja is the type of player that will continue to get better and push them over the top in the coming year or two. And then in the East, I think it's going to be Wizards Hornets uh, as the 7 and 8 seeds. Honestly, I think the Celtics, um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Celtics win, but I don't think that they see this now as like, okay, this is a championship or bust season. I think this is a get everyone out healthy so we can figure out and assess what we have and make the moves that we need to now. Uh, because without Jalen Brown, really, like, their chances were pretty severely damaged. And I don't see the organization going all out when, you know, it's clear that this roster probably wasn't going to take them to a title anyways. Uh, but that said, I'm just picking picking the Hornets just for conversation. I think I would not be surprised at all if the Celtics were to win. Uh, that's my thought. So it's going to be Tuesday and Wednesday for the, the uh, playing games. And then the playoffs themselves start Saturday. Uh, let me know what you're excited to see for these games, if you like the play-in format, uh, which teams you'll be rooting for to make it, and just any any general thoughts on the play-in tournament or the season as a whole. I'd love to hear them in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will be back soon.